Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'll cover the brand new update that was just released for the DJI Fly application. This latest version is 1.1.6, and it's available now for both iOS and Android products. Now, I've had the code for a little over a week, and I've been out flying both the Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air 2 on this new version of the code. And what's interesting is that the behavior of the Mavic Mini is slightly different than the features and functions you can get out with the Mavic Air 2. Now, my suspicion is, right on the heels of this DJI Fly update, they released new firmware for the Mavic Air 2 that introduced a lot of cool features. And I'll cover that in a separate clip because there's a lot going on there. They haven't released a firmware update for the Mavic Mini yet, so I'm suspecting that the Fly application was released to complement that new firmware for the Mavic Air 2. And again, I'm suspecting here that there's a firmware update coming for the Mavic Mini that'll fully flesh out what the application can do. So at the end of this clip, I'll talk about the differences between them because if you're flying the Mini, you're gonna have a little bit of a different experience and a little less control over some of the things going on inside the quad than you do with the Mavic Air 2. All right, so the update itself fundamentally brings two changes to the way you see your screen when you're flying with the DJI Fly app. The first one has to do with the way the battery indicator lets you know the status of the battery, which is probably the most important thing when you're flying, knowing how much time you've got left on the quad before it comes home or before it does something automatically. So I'll talk about that first. The second, which is a major upgrade, is the amount of control that DJI now gives you over two functions in the quad when you're flying. The first is pitch, down and up on the camera, how fast it moves and how smooth it is. And the second is yaw how it spins in the air. And both of those can have a really dramatic impact on cinematic footage. When you're out there filming, if you don't have those adjusted right, you're gonna get a really kind of an awkward move of the, of the drone up in the sky and people are gonna pick up on that. So I'll talk about those adjustments in a little bit, what they mean and which ones I'm gonna suggest you change into what settings I, I use for myself when I fly. But let's first talk about the battery indicator. Now I know this is a bit controversial and I don't understand why, but I've seen clips out there already where people are complaining about this change. I think it's a really good thing because when what DJI was trying to do with this DJI Fly application as compared to the DJI Go 4 application is they were trying to make it simpler so that people could fly a little easier. They didn't want to have as cluttered a screen with all the indicators and things on there that were kind of distracting if you're trying to fly your quad. So I think the thought was when they came out with the DJI Fly application initially was to build a cleaner interface that was more intuitive and easier for pilots to understand because let's be honest, when you're flying a quad, you're focused on what's going on with the screen, but you have to look up and make sure you can see your quad in the sky. The more things that are on that screen and the less intuitive they are, the harder it is for you to control that drone. And like I said, the battery indicator to me is probably the one of the most important ones because it's it's what keeps the quad up in the air. Now what they've done with this new battery indicator is they've changed it to a circle that gives you the percentage of the battery that's left in the quad. And it's green typically if you're flying. So you'll see 79%, 65%, whatever it happens to be is how much energy is still packed in that battery for you to fly. What's cool about that is if you tap that indicator, underneath it, you'll see three other metrics that are gonna be displayed. The first one is when it's gonna to return to home. So it's actually counting down to let you know if you keep flying and don't pay attention, at this point, after this thing gets down to zero, the quad's gonna take over and start flying home. Now, you have the option to interrupt that. Dangerous thing to do, but I've done it before where it's triggered to return to home and I'm thinking, yeah, I got plenty of time yet and I've got a beautiful angle on this shot. I wanna get a couple more pictures, so I'll cancel the return to home and stay on scene to finish that filming. The second uh, indicator is when it's gonna do a, a mandated landing, where it's gonna go to automatic landing. Now, if you ignore that return to home for too long, the quad's gonna go, Rick, I know you don't want me to come home, I don't know why, but if I don't do something, the battery's gonna drain completely, I'm gonna fall out of the sky. So that mandated landing or that forced landing happens if you try to fly too much longer past that return to home, the drone's gonna take over and start landing. You can cancel that one as well if you want. Now, that's where it gets really dangerous because all you've got left in the battery is you know you don't have enough juice to get home, you can probably still do a landing with it, but you're really on the edge of being out of electrons in that battery. So the third indicator is fully depleted. You never wanna get into that zone. I can say that 50 times and you're still probably gonna do it a couple times. I know I do as well, where I've gotten it home and just landed it in time before the battery was empty. But I like knowing 
where those trigger points are when I tap that indicator. Not that I'm ever going to push it that far, but that return to home can be a scary thing if you're flying and all of a sudden the drone says, hey, I'm coming back home and it starts beeping. That You can panic, right? You're, you're way out there and you're trying to do something and all of a sudden it's doing this automated return to home. So knowing where those, those bands are visually, looking at the screen, I think is a really good thing. And again, an older guy like me, when I had that tiny little display and the battery percentage and I could put some other indicators up there about the temperature and the voltage and all that stuff, but but those small little indicators are really hard for me to see, but now I've got a nice green circle. So I know exactly what the percentage is. And if I'm curious about the return to home, I just tap it. It drops down the menu, like I'm showing you now, and you can see exactly how much time you've got left. My only pet peeve with this is that they didn't do it in standard time format. They did it sort of in feet and inches, which doesn't make sense to me. Maybe that's an international standard. I probably should know that as an engineer, but to me, it would have made sense to do minutes double dot seconds, right? So I know exactly how many minutes and seconds I've got left, but either way, you can convert it in your head. It's just one more thing I have to think about. All right, so that's the battery indicator. And again, I've seen some clips online where guys are saying, man, I hate this. I like the old one. I really wish they didn't change it. I guess when you change anything, there are going to be people that don't like change. So for me, I like it. I think it's a good move. And I think sticking with that theme of making DJI fly simpler and more intuitive, I think they nailed it with the battery indicator. All right, the next one has to do with the control of the gimbal. Now, the Mavic Air 2 came with factory settings, and let me explain a little bit about how, how humans perceive movement, right? So when you're, when you're moving as a human, we're analog devices. We're not digital devices, which means we don't jerk and turn. We don't turn and stop and turn and quick and look like this. That's a robotic move. That's a digital move. An analog move is slowly ramping up to turn and then hitting the point you want to look at and slowly slowing down past that point. So we have a natural buttery smooth movement, horizontal, vertically when we're moving around. If you're filming and you've got really severe digital starts and stops when you're filming, you're going to pick up on that. That's something that humans intuitively see as not natural, right? And you want natural footage when you're flying. So not being able to adjust how the pitch is moving on the camera when you're panning down or, or how the yaw works when you're spinning sideways where it starts really quick, it stops really quick, you pick up on that. So being able to adjust that is a really important thing. Now what DJI did is they actually took it a step further because they give you three settings because we've got normal sport and tripod, which are three modes you can fly the drone in by sliding that control on the Mavic Air 2 on the controller to either side. Obviously I understand tripod slows everything down to give you very cinematic footage. Normal is what I fly in most of the time. And then sport mode is that crazy berserk fast speed kind of filming. And that's not a great thing to film at unless you're chasing a boat or something, but you can adjust a couple of things in all three of those settings and they give you different categories that you can adjust based on what you're flying in, which is really great. Now, I fly mostly in normal, and the settings they've got in there for the pitch, let's start with that. The pitch is the camera moving down or moving back up. You have two settings inside there. You have speed, which is how fast it actually moves, and you have smoothness. Now, I've seen a few people online describe this as how far the camera continues to travel after you take your finger off the, the thumb wheel, and that's part of it, but there's a ramp up at the beginning of how quickly it reacts to that movement of that thumb wheel, and at the end, when you let it go. So when you first hit it, the smoothness determines how quickly the gimbal actually starts to move in whatever direction you're trying to move it, and at the end, how far it goes past the point where you let go of that, that particular thumb wheel. And that's important, and the way I like to describe when people are asking me about smoothness, it's sort of like when you were a kid, or maybe an adult, you're out on an icy lake and you want to run across the lake. For whatever reason, I'm not doing that at my age, but if you want to cross, run across the lake, you got to get started. So you start running like this, and you can't really get traction because you're on ice. So it takes a couple of seconds for your traction to kick in, and then you start moving, and you ramp up really slowly to your high speed. And then you're booking across that lake, and then you want to stop on the other side. Well, the minute you stop running, you're going to slide past the point where you want to stop. So that's what smoothness is. That slow ramp up to speed and then ramp down from speed at the end. And that's a very natural movement. So adjusting the smoothness so it doesn't jerk into a movement and jerk out of a movement is really important. And they give you that adjustment. To adjust your gimbal settings, you'll want to start on the main screen of the DJI Fly application. In the upper right hand corner, you'll notice three dots. When you tap those, you'll bring up the main settings page. Across the top are all the categories of adjustments you can make to the quad. You'll want to tap Control and then scroll up until you see Advanced Gimbal Settings and tap that. Now you're on the screen where you can make adjustments to both the pitch speed and pitch smoothness as well as the yaw speed and yaw smoothness for all three modes of flight. Normal mode, tripod mode, and sport mode. And these are very personal settings. I can't tell you what's right for you, but for me, and I do a lot of photography with the quads, for me, those two settings with speed, I wanted a 10. 
And with smoothness, I'm gonna go with uh, 20. 20 is the one I go with, so 10 and 20 for those. Now that's for, the, that's for the gimbal pitch, for going up and down like this. For yaw, which is the movement of the drone sideways, again, remember I said we're analog creatures, so smoothing this out is great, and making it slower so it looks natural is great, but if you don't adjust the yaw, you're gonna jerk sideways when you're trying to, trying to pan across the field or something, so you definitely wanna adjust those as well. Now, here it's a little bit different, where I want them to be a little bit quicker. Now I'm talking about normal mode right now, but in normal mode, I want that yaw to be a little bit quicker. So I set my yaw, both my speed and my smoothness at 35. So I've got, for my uh, pitch, I've got 10 and 20 for speed and smoothness. And for my yaw, I've got 35 and 35. And for me, that's perfect because it gives me the yaw movement a little bit faster, which is okay because I've got the smoothness pretty high. So I'm gonna kind of swing into that slowly, but come pretty quickly to that turn and come out of that turn the same speed. But with my gimbal movement up and down, I really want that pan to be sort of natural when you're looking down at that landscape or looking back up at the horizon. So those are the settings I'd recommend. Now, what's interesting here is that you can adjust those, like I'd mentioned, for normal, for tripod, and for sport mode. Now, I don't adjust them any different for sport mode. I know if you're if you're trying to get to an area pretty quick and find a target, you may want to dial those in really tight so it does move quickly and don't care about the smoothness because you're trying to find that lighthouse way out there in the field, you want to get there quickly. So for sport, you may want to adjust them, but for normal flying modes, those are the settings that I go with. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the differences between these two quads. With the battery indicator, you see the battery indicator on the Mavic Mini, but for me, maybe it's just me and I've got update firmware or something, but on the latest version of firmware I have, I get the indicator showing me the percentage, but when I tap on it, all those metrics below it are blank. Now again, I think there's probably a firmware update coming from the Mavic Mini. I don't know that, but I'm assuming there might be to fix that, to give you the same metrics you get on the Mavic Air 2. But for me, that's blank. I like the fact that I can see there's 79% of the battery left. I would love to see what the return to home, what the forced landing, and what the depleted battery levels are with that. So hopefully they'll fix that. As far as the adjustments go, you get the adjustments on the Mavic Mini but you don't have as wide of an adjustment range. You basically don't have any control over the yaw yet. You have control over the pitch, which is great. I did a clip on that, and actually I picked the exact same numbers I gave you in this clip as far as my recommendations go. Speed, 10, smoothness, 20 on those, but there's no yaw adjustment. So again, they updated the firmware here to enable a lot of that stuff. Maybe there's a firmware update coming that'll enable it on the Mavic Mini as well. Yaw to me is not that it's important, but it's not as important as the pitch. The pitch is really a big one that you'll pick up on. So hopefully we'll see those updates coming for that. But anyway, that's it. Now, I've also got a clip that I'm working on talking about the firmware update for the Mavic Air 2 because that was a major update and there's some incredibly cool things in that firmware update. I've had it for a little while. I've been playing with it. I'm telling you, the thing I love about companies that build digital products like this, especially companies like DJI that stay on top of their firmware is they can sell you a product that does some pretty cool things when you buy it. But over time, it gets smarter, it gets better, it gets more sophisticated. And a firmware update like this that introduces the features that they just added to the Mavic Air 2, it's like flying a new drone. It's almost like they came out with the Mavic Air 3 with some of the cool features that are built into that. Now I'm gonna tease you with those in this clip, but I'll have that clip up sometime this week. I've been out flying like mad to capture a lot of the footage around that. So stay tuned to the channel for that. And that's pretty much all I have for today. So if you have any questions about anything I've covered today or drones in general or tech in general for that matter, drop those in the comments below and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. I I love doing these kind of clips. I just love flying. I have a lot of fun out there and I can't wait to sit down and talk to you guys about what I've uncovered with these new technologies. So if you're enjoying this, stay tuned to the channel. I've got a lot of stuff coming up. Matter of fact, why don't you join the Drone Valley family by hitting that subscribe button down there and that way you'll get a notification when we post something new. Another thing I did want to mention before I say goodbye today is I have another drone giveaway coming up this week. We just gave away the Mavic Mini. I have another drone we're going to be giving away this week. So you definitely want to stay tuned to the channel to enter that contest and maybe win that product. If you need accessories, I say this every time, you can hit the website. We've got a ton of accessories for both of these drones and pretty much every drone on the market out there today. We'd love for you to support the channel by hitting the website and buying those products from us if you feel that's something you'd like to do. So thanks again for watching and until next time, <laughs> happy flying. Mm -hmm.